What's up, rookies? Welcome to another snippet on what pharmacies do. Today, we are going to talk about what pharmacies do in the industry setting. And to do that, I am delighted to have with me an old friend, Dr. Melissa Atocha from Genentech who is going to share her experience as a pharmacist in that company. Welcome, Melissa. How are you? How have you been? I'm, I've been good. It's been it's a pleasure to be here. I'm so excited to see your smiling face. <laughs> it's long overdue. I've thought about you. I reached out to you a long time ago, but you were on the road doing your cycling thing, so it wasn't the right time. Melissa and I uh, shared a few uh, residency rotations and experiences together back in 2017, and we've remained in touch since then, so I'm so excited. This is a special, special guest. Welcome again. So tell us, um, start by telling us about yourself. Why did you become a pharmacist, and how has that journey been uh, for you up to where you are today? Okay, let's see. You'll you'll have to guide me a little bit. So why did I become a pharmacist? So if I'm really honest, I was looking for a stable career. I uh, was lucky enough to get into uh, the six-year program right from um, high school. So it was with Rutgers University, the Ernest Mario School of Pharmacy. Okay. So I wanted a stable, even, you know, at 17, I was looking for, you know, something stable because I came from a very uh, lower socioeconomic background. So that was like the top of mind. Um, and then I was also looking for something that would, you know, fulfill my cup, right? So I was looking for something where I can feel helpful. And I was actually dating someone at that time whose <laughs> sister uh, was, I think, finishing the program. She wasn't a pharmacist yet. And he told me great things about it. And I was like, you know what? Oh, I think okay. this sounds great. So um, <laughs> okay. I applied to Rutgers Pharmacy School. And, and that's how I ended up in the program. So you were 17 or in your teens when you when you got into pharmacy school? 17. And then I did a six-year program, undergrad, grad together. So okay. by 23, I had my I had my farm D. I think it was 23. Nice, 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 nice. And then after that, you did a residency. Why? Yeah. So actually, right before my residency, I actually um worked for Walgreens for about eight months as a I staff. remember that. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I um did was a floater. So I rotated from different to different pharmacies, eventually got placed at a pharmacy. During that time, mm -hmm. I also applied to residency. So okay. I didn't want to do a residency right when I um left school. I was just so burnt out. School was so rough. And I was like, I need something like a little bit of a break. So I worked for yeah. Walgreens, which maybe it was a break in its own way, <laughs> but it was very busy. Um, uh -huh. I did a residency because while working, you know, working for Walgreens, I realized it's great. I'm seeing a lot of patients, but I can't dedicate the amount of time I want to dedicate to them. Mm -hmm. And I really yeah. enjoy that counseling piece of it. Yes, yes, I, yes. You know, even early on, I knew I wanted to avoid settings like the ER because I just was not good at just, working that quickly mm -hmm. so, Walgreens felt like that a little bit in its own way not like the ER yeah. but in its yeah. own way so I was like I let me try ambulatory care so I applied for just ambulatory care residencies and there's only you know at that time there's only a few mm -hmm. in the country PGY ones um mm -hmm. and and that's how I ended up in California from New Jersey yeah you were at clinical lay right I was, yeah. So yeah. the, the yeah. rest of the yeah. tour university and then mm -hmm. my main clinic was clinical clinical lay. Yeah, yeah. Totally. I love how you described your your mindset of, of what you wanted. You didn't want anything too crazy, too fast-paced. And and Walgreens was a little bit that way. And same thing as the ER and the acute care setting. Um, and you you figured out that, you know, ambulatory care would provide you with that direct patient care that you you really liked, but at a, you know, more um, stable, consistent pace. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think sometimes yeah. you know, as, as kids, we're not taught um, the practicality of having a job and being an adult, right? So yeah. being yeah. in the healthcare profession, you know that you're working holidays, right? And if you're not, the, one of the things I liked about ambulatory care is that you have a, a set clinic schedule, right? You may wear some weekends depending on your clinic, but, you know, mm -hmm. I worked Monday through Friday, mm -hmm. you know, eight to five. I knew I had a lunchtime because the entire office went to lunch. So yeah. 
it was just something I preferred. So you got to think about some of those, some of those realities too, when you pick yeah, your profession. Absolutely. Absolutely. So how does a, does an ambulatory care trained pharmacist ends up in industry? <laughs> Good question. So I, I love my clinical practice. So I did, um, I did residency and then I worked with the uh, University of California, Davis, and yeah. then I worked with Kaisa Permanente. Yeah. Uh, loved it. Loved my development there. I started working <laughs> with um, the medical residents. And then mm -hmm. I remember when I left one of my positions, the attendings were coming to me and asking questions. So yeah. I remember that that's like one of the most fondest memories I have as a, you know, a practicing pharmacist. Mm -hmm. because I saw my own growth and people relying on me. So that was great. I love clinical pharmacy. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then I had been there for a few years, you know, I had practiced um gosh maybe four and a half years of, of ambulatory care if I include maybe, my residency yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I was at a point of what next I'm someone that gets bored really easily I want to know you know what do I do next and I didn't want to do admin I feel like that's something you, you do right I already had you know build a clinic from scratch mm -hmm. had chaired a couple of committees and I was like uh, mm -hmm. been a had you know been a preceptor for residents and students also great but I was like what next yeah um, and yeah. I had this dream of cycling cross country. Oh my gosh. I decided to do that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Took so a break. I, you took a break. It took a little bit of a break, just a little bit. Um, it took me three months to cycle cross country. I took another three three months off. And then I came back and and said, I want to try something different. It's time. Because um I also took I also took a break at that time because I was you know I had about five years of practice under my belt I was double board certified Woo! so I was pretty confident yeah. to be able to get a, a job afterwards yeah. uh -huh. one of the positions too you had confidence in yourself that you know it didn't matter how long you took a break you could you had built the experience and you had built the the certifications and the training to be able to get back in jump back in whenever you felt like it okay Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you have to have confidence in yourself, right? Otherwise, who's yeah. gonna have it for you, right? Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, let's see. So I came back and I put feelers out there. You know, I'm looking for a job. I'm back, everyone. Please. <laughs> I remember you reaching out to me too and asking me if I knew anyone hiring. But I think that was after your your um your cross country thing. Yeah. So you put yourself out there and. Absolutely. That's like the key, right? Just to reach yes. out to your contacts. And yes, yes. I apply to so many different jobs. I also apply to clinical jobs as a kind of having a, a safety thinking I'd be more hireable in that sector, right? Um, yeah. I took a couple contract jobs in between. I worked for Magellan, so PBM, and I worked for the California Department of Public Health. Mm -hmm. um, and then a friend... You've dabbled in everything. I, I have. I love it. It's just wow. It, it's just fun to like learn that you can reinvent yourself. So that's like mm -hmm. you know that's one of the things I know. You one of your questions is um, what do you you know what do you what do you want to say to like aspiring pharmacists and whatnot? Yes, yes, like, yes, yes. Don't be afraid to reinvent yourself. It, it's really it because you know you have the power to do what you wish to do. That is such a good advice. And I was going to ask you because I would want to do something like you did. Take a break and 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 live life a little bit. Do something that that makes me happy. But I'm afraid. I'm scared because, you know, how am I going to pay for that? How am I going to yeah. afford uh, three, four, you know, I don't know how long it takes. Some people do a year. So, but I, I guess you, you did say it off the record when we were chatting. It it took a, a lot of planning. You know, you plan. Yeah. For Way I, I plan for two years and like yeah. just to get out there yeah. I have I have yeah. student loans right so yeah yeah and at that point when I started planning I was pre-pandemic so our loans um I have federal student loans so they're in pause yeah. right now yeah um, lower for that <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah. so they were I was still paying them right it was pre-pandemic when I started planning and yeah. and I have to save for that because I wasn't going to be working I didn't want to put them on forbearance I wanted yeah. to keep yeah. Them. So yeah 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 it took me two years to save and plan and it's possible um and I could have probably taken out more time if I was a little less bougie yeah. <laughs> but it's possible you just have to yeah. you just want you yeah. have to want it bad enough mm -hmm. right to mm -hmm. you know, dedicate mm -hmm. that time for yourself yeah. Yeah, don't be afraid to reinvent yourself. I really love that. We'll get back to that towards the end. Um, so right now, 
you're looking for a job, you do some contracts, you put yourself out there and you do what you have to do while waiting to get something more permanent. So at that, during that time, are you thinking you want industry or did industry just kind of land in your lap and, and you went with it? Well, I, you know, industry is something that I had considered for since I was a student, but I was, I was a little more reserved, shyer, so I didn't ask enough questions and clinical just seemed the way to go. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't completely out of the blue, but I did have a friend, a colleague that I used to work with um, at UC Davis that reached out and said, hey, there's this posting. Mm -hmm. um, it's for a clinical educator. It's mm -hmm. paid for days. So it might be a good transition to go from clinical to, to this kind of role in industry. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're looking for Spanish speaking. So I'm also Spanish. Oh, speaking. yes the skills hmm. so, so that got me through I would say I relied on my Spanish speaking um and <laughs> I that got me through and mm -hmm. it's just something I wanted to try so here I am a year later after starting the role and yeah. it's going well so yeah. far learning a lot still it's it's been a big transition to go from clinical to industry and you're still a clinical educator because you mentioned earlier you you liked um, you enjoyed when providers reached out to you and asked questions and relied on your expertise for and guidance to answer those questions. So, um, do you feel like, um, in terms of describing your roles and responsibilities, what does a pharmacist do as a clinical educator at Genentech? Um, is it that sort of drug information um, kind of role? Well, how, how, how is that going? Yeah, so fair question. So not in drug information. So drug information has its, its own, you know, branch sort of industry. Gotcha. Uh, they're much more cut dry information, much more targeted for providers. Okay. Um, a lot of, I think a lot of people are familiar with the medical science liaison role. And they're with the medical branch of the the company, so MSLs. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. And then, so they're that's also a field role, what they call. So they travel, right? They travel mm -hmm. to the customers. Yeah. Um, yes. So I'm actually in the commercial side of the brand, of the company. So mm -hmm. I work with the sales reps. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I am considered actually the man driving role. So because I talk to patients pre-script. So I work a lot, My I work with a, a drug Hem Libra, so it's for hemophilia A. So okay. I work with the advocacy chapters okay. and they, sometimes we host programs and do booths uh, and events for them. And then okay. we get to talk to whoever patient is there. And then we can talk to them if they have interest about knowing about Hem Libra. Okay. Uh, so that's kind of the, the basics of it of where I am located with an industry, if that makes sense. Okay. Hem Libra is the name of the drug and the condition is hemophilia A? Correct, yes. Okay, and so you you are a clinical educator, but in the more patient-oriented sense then? Yes, yes. So I, well, I, uh, I focus on my main customers are patients. Okay. And then I also, one of my other customers is specialty pharmacies. So I work, I get to work with some pharmacists. Okay, and, okay. because uh, it's, a, it's, it's not a common disorder. So those medications have to come from specialty pharmacies. Yes, yes. So it's like a, it's, it's okay. a niche, right? It's rare disease, it's specialty mm -hmm. pharmacy. So okay. um, completely different and it's a smaller environment. So that, I think that's one of the things that helps because it's rare disease, okay. you know, there's a smaller group of people and you're able to, Okay. You gotta learn quickly or who's who and what's what. Got you. Uh, yeah, yeah. I work and then with the so I work on education for patients and as well as uh, I'll do in services for staff and I only do on label so I only work with the package and for package insert information. Got you. Got um, versus, you. for example, MSLs can do um, off label information so they can talk about ongoing clinical trials, etc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And and MSLs deal more with providers, provider education. Correct. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I'll um, work a little bit with providers when I go in with my sales team. So okay. they'll go into providers and say, hey, here's my team. I have a clinical educator for your patients. Okay. And I guess build relationships in that sense, but okay. they're not a main customer like it would be for an MSL. Okay. So when you say patients are your customers, are you helping them with uh, affording the medication? It depends on the on the disease, right? On the area. So for 
for example, for Hemlibra and Mesusumab, it's been out now for about five years. Mm -hmm. So initially, there was a lot of reimbursement concerns and affordability concerns, mm -hmm. because it always is a question when a medication comes out. Mm -hmm. Because the the medication has been out for an X amount of time already, there's not as many concerns with affordability. Yeah, true. If you direct yeah. patients to like the copay assistance, the genetic, genetic patient foundation, mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. Well, give them general resources and point them to the right person. Basically, gotcha. I focus more on, um, you know, how do you administer the medication? How what's the frequency? What's the dose? What are some of the counseling points? Mm -hmm. Things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, that's pretty involved, pretty pretty intense work. Um, and is that the bulk of it? Is there any other side um, activities that you 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 do in your role? Yes. It, it depends. So I think industry actually is the main, one of the main parts of your role is learning how to interact internally because there's so many players internally. So you have your, you know, your boss, your boss's boss, your sales team, your medical team, the marketing team, and you inter you work with them all like, for different projects, for different aspects. Um, okay. And I think that's been the most difficult part coming in, just knowing, figuring out that aspect, not even my sector externally and my customers are externally, it's more internally. I think it's a it's a complete different world than, than ambulatory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's a big part of my job, I think. Okay. And, okay. And because it, okay. Yeah, because it's a field role, they place a lot of importance on on like networking and relying on each other because otherwise we're just all on our own in the field, right? In our in our home, meeting customers, yeah. working to in a silo versus working together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And working together, I mean, in working together, you probably have a a, a wider, bigger, better impact. Um, yeah, and coordination is key, right? Because imagine you're a provider, right? And then I have an educator shows up and says, I have this resource for your patient. And then the sales team shows up and says, hey, you, are you interested in this medication? Yeah. Medical shows up. So if we all show up as a team, it's, it's yeah, much yeah. easier for the yeah. provider and it makes sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. So I think we may have touched on this already. So what is your favorite thing about being a PharmD, about being a pharmacist? What do you like? Yeah. Favorite thing, I think... One, I think I've mentioned that, right? Being able to reinvent myself is yeah. one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and doing multiple things. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. I love patient education. Like I love relying on not only my knowledge as a subject area expert, a subject matter expert, but also leaning on my humanity more so and, mm. and utilizing those people's skills to, to meet people where they are, right? Whether it's patients or providers. So that's my favorite part, I think, of combining that knowledge and, and the interpersonal skills. Ooh, I love the way you said it, leaning into my humanity. Yeah. That's the best way I've heard it said, because we say, you know, treat the patient, not the number. That What that really means is leaning on your humanity. Yeah. Treat the person it's in front of you like another human being presenting to you and needing help exactly yeah and like, oh. like imagine if it was you or your mom or your sister or, or yes whatever, you know like that is the best way i've heard it. I've, heard, I've heard it said leaning into your humanity um and and i've said it so many times to friends even here that i think you're saying the same thing i'm saying that what i like best about being a pharmacist and again you said it better being able to reinvent yourself and i say it as there are so many opportunities, so many roles, so many um, ways you can have an impact as a pharmacist. And you're the perfect example. And I think um, from getting into pharmacy school to dabbling into community and then going back and doing your residency and then getting into managed care and ambulatory care and then not industry in what, not even seven years? Seven, am I going on eight, eight years now, 2015, I graduated, almost eight years. Yeah, and, and look at how much you've covered um, in, in, in that relatively small time frame and the experience you've built and the knowledge you've built, and I'm sure the relationships that you've built. 
Uh, and and I'm lucky I know you because if I if I if I ever want to go into industry, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to you and see how we Thanks can you. how you can help me out. Please um, do. I'm all for it. I'm always I'm always <laughs> trying to refer people. It's I know just, you, you got to pay it forward. Yeah, I know you are. I really appreciate you. Um, given all that you've experienced, all that you've gone through, what advice do you have? for aspiring pharmacists and new and new pharmacists on how to make the best out of their pharmacy journey. Advice, you, it, you um, told us earlier, not do not be afraid to reinvent yourself. That yeah, absolutely be one of the best advice I've ever heard. Um, is there anything else? You know, I I want to share this because I'm I'm totally not I people say networking. And I honestly, like, I, re I kind of recoil at the term networking. I am totally an introvert. I love to be, you know, I, I gain energy from being on my own. Like I, I love one-on-one -on -one connections, but it's just, and it's funny because I'm in commercial right now. I'm in front of people all the time. I, um, you know, I'm doing this with you, but I'm, I'm a real introvert, but, and so networking, the thought of networking, that's uh, basically like uh, I don't want to do it. it makes me recoil but I, I think there's, there's a point there you gotta network with purpose and search for connection and not just you know network aimlessly right yes yeah I think that's what's helped me you know I think at the end of the day you um you gotta try to leave a place better than you know how you walked into it and then you never know maybe I mean, and you don't do that just because you never know what may happen in the future but you just do it because and then in the future maybe you know that person offers you a job or gives you a referral or whatever it is right so I think that is that is key um but don't focus too much on that I, by any means like you know you said you're an introvert like Melissa <laughs> um and I think even being in touch with yourself is so important. People do it through meditation. People do it through cycling and traveling the world because by doing that, it also allows you to really know what you want because you're talking about networking with purpose, but networking with purpose really means to network with purpose, you got to know what you want. You got to know where you're going and where you're looking for. And sometimes just being an introvert and, you know, hanging out with yourself allows that you know those downloads from you know the divine whatever yeah. you want to call it to come into your heart and kind of guide you into into what the next step should be for you as an individual yeah I love it I'm gonna call that I'm gonna say I'm hanging out with myself all the time <laughs> <laughs> it's true right it's it's you gotta know yourself to be able to to, to be able to serve others you know uh, effectively absolutely yeah 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 so network with purpose do not be afraid to reinvent yourself in other words do not be afraid to try new things and you mentioned also have confidence in yourself yeah I mean it doesn't mean that you're not you're not scared or, or nervous or anything but it just means you try right I think that's where I said I don't I don't by any means think I'm like the most you know, experienced person or whatnot, but I'm always, I'm not afraid to try things. And I think um, that's helped, but I still won't do inpatient. So I don't know how you inpatient pharmacists <laughs> do it. <laughs> it's too much for me. I need time to think. <laughs> well, we can talk about that in a different episode. How about that's that? That's good. <laughs> talk about why I do inpatients, you know, somewhere else, another day. <laughs> but I mean, this was so good, Melissa. I'm sure anyone listening to it is going to gain a great insight about um, being a clinical uh, educator um, with an industry company because I'm not going to lie. I, I had no idea about about this position. Every time I think industry, I think drug representatives, I think medical science liaison, um, and and I'm sure there's several other roles that pharmacists can play um, in, in such companies that we're not aware of yet. So if you think about, you know, anyone that, that could come on that has kind of a a, a special other niche you can you can send them send them our way and we'll be happy to have them on and share because I really want people who are interested in pharmacy to know how much how much um how many opportunities there are available absolutely right, yeah. guys thank you I'll think about it and then I'll get back to you for sure yes please 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 do um if you liked this episode don't forget to subscribe to 
to the Rookie Pharmacist channel so you can have access to all these videos and all these amazing pharmacists. And until our next video, stay blessed. God bless you. I love you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>